I don't usually do this, but I felt it. Well, the tempest up on the sea, and it walked up on the waves. He cleansed the lepers from their spots, and he opened up the grave. Some said, now he's a prophet, when he saw the work that he done. But the Bible plainly tells us he was God's only son. Who was that man? So coming out of Eden with garments dyed and red as a crimson flow. Well, it was that man that died on Calvary's mountain to save us from that awful place below. The prophet prophesied, and they said that what this man would be. He calls the lame to leap and shout, blinded eyes to see. All power was given in his hand, and he bore our grief and our shame. If you don't know just who he is, King Jesus is his name. Who was that man? Saw coming out of Edom with garments dyed. Had red as the crimson flow. Well, it was that man that died upon Calvary's mountain. Save us from that awful place below. He stilled the tempest up on that sea and he walked up on that way. He cleansed the lepers from their spot. He opened up the grave. Some said that it was a prophet when he saw the work that he'd done. But the Bible plainly tells us he was God's only son. Who was that man? Saw coming out of Edom with garments dyed and red as a crimson flow. Well, it was that man that died upon Calvary's mountain to save us from that awful place below. We'd do as good as the quartet if you didn't do no singing. <laughs> Hallelujah. Are you glad you got religion? Yes. I tell you what, if I wasn't, I'd get rid of that kind. I preached over at Anadarko, Oklahoma, when I was a young man, about 19 or 18, and old full blood Indian boys standing around everywhere, and one of them couldn't talk English hardly at all when I got through jumping out. about all I've done before the time then and I that's that's all I've been I've been a, running a marathon since I've been here ever since I've been here <laughs> he, he said me no got him me get him me want him like you got him <laughs> you reckon folks would like to have what you got amen you ever hear anybody say I'd like to be like grandma so-and-so I'd like to be like grandpa so-and-so I want religion. It makes me happy. I've got it. I was sad. My father spent six months in the hospital, brother in the hospital. I worked 42 hours a week, went to school every day, had to carry my brother's driver's license, put two bricks under a Model A seat, and drove for Mama. We had it rough. We had it rough. When Christmas come, there was no gifts. Somebody finally brought us a few, but now the family didn't have no money. Uh, You know, uh, God just fixed me so I'd preach to the common people and they heard him gladly. That's right. Amen. I mean, he just fixed me so I could go and preach it. And I'm glad he did. I gave $15 for my first suit, and it was second-handed. Sam the Jew sold it to me, and he said, shoes to fit. It shoes to fit. It really wasn't that good a fit, but he was trying to sell the toots, you know. I didn't know nothing about them, David. I'm nothing about them. I just give you a little background. You only get saved. You can get saved. The banker won't loan you a dime. You can get saved. Yes, sir. Amen. If he won't let you have no groceries at the grocery store, you can get saved. God will save you. Yes. Felt the spirit about that brother right there last night. I never met him before that I know of. But I, and I don't make these trips to everybody. He's the only one I've made it to since I've been here. And there are others here. Sure, I know that. But I felt impressed to go to him. I told him, I feel the spirit about you, brother. I feel the spirit of God about you. And Philip Horton said he's one of the best men, Brother Moore. I didn't ask Philip to tell me that night. He just leaned over and said, that old boy's one of the best men in the country. One of the best men in the country. Well, if I was a horse, I'd sing three or four songs. I, <laughs> <laughs> I like the way he played that guitar, sing like, just help me out, you know. Every little bit helps, you know. Yeah. You read about the prophet, Brother Cody Herman, 
that was out in the wilderness, and they asked him to do a little prophesying for him. He couldn't even get in gear. They had him a minstrel there to help him out a little. Somebody said to dance to the music. You got that right. I love that. I love that good beat. <laughs> so he just dancing to the music. Well, sure I am. People get in the spirit and play that music. I can't hardly stay still when they do it. And then I dance with or without it. Uh, yeah. They brought that minstrel, started playing on that. The power of God come upon that man of God while he's playing that music. Did you ever feel the spirit come on you while he's playing the music? Yes, sir. Sure. Yeah. I was in church one day, just me and two more preachers. They as good men. They got up on the platform, one looked at the other, and the other looked at him and said, Yep, anybody ask you who I am, who I am, who I am? Anybody ask you who I am? Tell them I'm a child of God. Oh, they went into it, and I thought they was playing, but I found out pretty quick they wasn't. How God come up on us three, didn't have nobody there to help us. We went into it. Oh, man. You know how folks can't have no fun? Don't get in it. You got to get in it. Amen. You don't you wish you did. Well, you do that for Brother Moore. I've had the devil hit me every week. Hit me. Turn everything out. It can turn out on me. I refuse to preach and folks can't hear me. You ever hear anybody getting a testimony meeting? Everybody get up once you testify. The Lord hears you anyhow. Forget it. That's crazy. <laughs> they think we're dumb and idiots like it is. And we're just trying to act like it. If you want them to testify, let them with, where they can hear them. If you want them all to praise God together, let them do it. Yeah. Yeah. I was holding over boy meeting. I'm just talking because I feel at home, see. Yeah. It's, I know it's not customary to do this, but I'm not customary. You know what I mean? It's a, I was holding over boy meeting. Amen, go to God, amen, hallelujah. They couldn't hear nothing I was saying. And him, the pastor. I mean, he drowned out everything I never said. Yeah. I never heard so many. I counted 98 minutes in 10 minutes Sunday on your radio station here. On one feller. I finally turned to the pastor. It's hard for me to do. I said, brother, would you please shut it down so they can hear what I'm trying to say? You couldn't hear me say nothing. I mean, what are you saying, brother Moore? Look, at the best you can do, you're going to be branded as a goof, as a little bit off, as a little bit far out. So don't try to add to it. Just <laughs> obey God. Run if you feel like it. That's what I'm going to do. But I just talking to you about having a little wisdom when you worship God, you know. Just have a little good sense. Amen. Amen. Don't shut your eyes and go to running. If God ain't in it, we're going to pick you up back by the wall. <laughs> Amen. Oh, it's all right to worship. It's, I've seen them run like deer. So I have. It didn't hurt nothing. But you know, we just got to have a little sense. Amen. I don't know why I said that. Probably for old Randy here. Yeah, sure right. for her, right? I'm going to ask David to read it for him a while. Now, just put the pressure on David in this meeting. Just put the pressure on him. And I might have done better if he could have read better. <laughs> uh, he's my friend. Uh, has been for years. First time I come in here, he is just a little snotty-nosed boy running around trying to deceive Grat. Yeah. Him, and, him and David, my David, both uh, running around trying to deceive Grat and L.D. That's what we Amen. Trying. trying to put it by us. <laughs> they don't know what we're doing. Yeah, we know what they're doing. Amen. Yeah. But you know what? He got saved, and I come back in a few years later, and he had nerve to walk up to me and tell me I'm going to go up the store with him. I said, well, I'll go up there with you, David. I went up there. He went to buying some clothes back there, and I stood around there, and he asked me what size I wore. Well, I told him, you know, at what size. He wound up with uh, two or three coats there and a pair of trousers or two, and he got up there, and I said, what are you doing, David? He said, I'm buying these. Well, I had a suspicion. He said, I'm buying them for you. I said, no, you're not. You're not buying this stuff for me. That's expensive clothes. I, and you're not able. You're just a poor boy, and you can't buy that from me, and I ain't having it. That's the way it is. Well, you know, he just kept finning it around. He said he had a piece of money in his pocket, and he finally made me think he had a little money. I didn't know whether to believe him or not. I, uh, but anyhow, he bought them clothes from me. And, and uh, I've been knowing David since you're just a boy. Yeah. I had a friend had lots of money in a certain town, and I knew it, and I never shook hand with him for a week in that meeting. 
One night the Lord moved on me to preach on Don't Forget God. His name was two, three foot high on Outsiders Construction Company. Took more than one million dollar contract. And I knew it. After a week, I, he come down and nah, got me. He said, the LD he said, I was a busted man in 29. I promised God if it hit me, never forget him. He said, I haven't. So you have a room at my house, your own entrance to it, private room, well furnished, it's yours. I've never seen it. And that's been 40 years ago, I guess, 38. I've never seen it. Uh, when I left town, I gave the Lord the glory. He said to that pastor, you know them notes I signed for them preachers and had to pay them for them? And they ought, never offered them to pay them when they got, got me to loan the money and sign the notes, you know. And said they never paid it. But it said to God help me. It said there's one man come to town. She rebuilt, rebuilt my confidence in them preachers on the cross. This country. Well, King Jesus was walking through the land. On his way, he got weary. With his disciples, the gospel band, they stopped at the well of Samaria. No man loves me like Jesus. Glory, hallelujah. No man loves me like Jesus. Glory, hallelujah. On the well, the Lord sat down. His disciples went, they left him. A woman from a Samaria town, a drink he did request of her. No man loves me like Jesus. Glory, hallelujah. No man loves me like Jesus. Glory, hallelujah. Why do you ask a drink of me with an evasive feeling? You know by law the Samaritans and Jews have no dealing. If you had asked a drink of me, regardless of your nation, the waters I would have given you are the waters of salvation. No man loves me like Jesus. Glory, hallelujah. No man loves me like Jesus. Glory, hallelujah. When she asked and when she got a drink, her soul was claiming. She forgot that water pot and ran to town proclaiming. No man loves me like Jesus. Glory, hallelujah. No man loves me like Jesus. Glory, hallelujah. No guitar player to help me. Oh. All right. Gonna... You know, I preached an hour and 18 minutes. Late. I never timed myself. I never timed myself at all. I've never timed myself. I preached an hour and 18 minutes last night, an hour and 18 minutes of service before, an hour and 18 minutes of service before that. Isn't that strange? That's right. That's what happened. That's what that old boy right over there said. Hour and 18 minutes. Three times straight. So I'll have to go at least an hour tonight. <laughs> maybe not. I'm not timing myself. I thought maybe the Lord might have touched me. We're here to get help from God. And, and if God don't help us, we're into it. If the Lord don't help us, we're into it. <clears throat> David, I want you to read for me from Psalms, the 18th chapter, and the first or second verse. And we're going to go to Psalm 27 and 1. We're going to Psalm 28, 6 through 9. But we are reading now from Psalms 18 and 1. The book of Psalms 18 and 1. We want to read verse 1 and 2 is what we want to read. I will love thee, O Lord, my strength. Hold it. That's the whole first verse. I will love thee, O Lord, my strength. <laughs> Seemed like the Lord may have impressed me after... Now, I just know how I do, and, and I really appreciate your good compliments about whether I do good or not. But uh, God has never bragged on me in 47 years. He spoke to me time and time again. He spoke to me about you the last time I was in the country, talked to me about you. But uh, uh, he spoke to me through the years. He's never said you did well, you preached well, that's good. He's never said that to me. The only thing he said is for their own. Oh, they're all, yes. Oh, God. And he has given me strength to do it. Read it again, David. I will love thee, O Lord, I will my love thee, strength. O, my strength. Read it. The Lord is my rock. He is my rock, my sword, and my shield. He is a wheel in the middle of a wheel. He is the governor of the nation. Bless his name. You ever hear that? Easy song. Ain't hard to sing and play a guitar with him, but we don't need no guitar right now, Terry. I stopped and started too quick. 
He's my rock, my sword, and my shield. He's a wheel in the middle of a wheel. He's the governor of the nation. Bless his name. What else did he say, David? My fortress uh-huh. and my deliverer. Uh-huh. My God. Uh-huh. My strength. My what? My strength. Great God, that's what we've got to have. Somebody can move it. Got to have somebody can stir it. Yes, sir. We got somebody to build it. Yes, sir. Somebody get it and walk on with it. <laughs> I was raised by stout people. My daddy was the stoutest man I ever fooled around. And I know if you're not strong physically, don't take offense if I'm going to preach tonight because that ain't what we're building on. But it's good to have strength. It's good for somebody to walk through the door. It's good to have a general like we had over in the desert storm. If he had a if he had said, I don't know what in the world we're going to do, it looks like you saints got us. But when that old boy talked, it just made Americans want to get up and walk. Yes, sir. He said, don't worry about it. And when they interviewed them boys that was over there on the front line, most of them they interviewed said, we're going to take care of it. Said, we're going, we're going to take care of it. You know, that's what they said to Eisenhower when he walked amongst them troops. I, I personally heard him interview an old boy, and he said, don't worry, General. We're going to take care of it for you. Yeah. Died by the thousand. They told him to take care of it. There's something about strength that makes church get up and go. You know it? Yes, sir, brother. Everybody in it get down. Can't hardly make it hard. And all oh, got the mother grub. We watch that man and we watch that woman. It's always been the backbone. They got the Lord is my rock. Whew. He's my deliverer. Amen. After reading the colored folks down home, said, God delivered me. Why should I be bound? God delivered me. Why should I be bound? He's a deliverer. And he is my strength. Read the rest of it, David. In whom I will trust. All right. My buckler. All right. The horn of my salvation and of my high tower. Great Lord. We're going to talk on strength tonight. Something everybody needs. Let's look at Psalm uh, 27, chapter in the first verse. David, if you will. 27, 1. The Lord is my light. You've got to have a light. Preaching. Uh, I was hunting over in Colorado, and, and we in the dark night, we went into wilderness territory where you can't take in engines or, or cars or nothing other than horses. You know, we backpacked way back in there, so we'd be back there where the elk was elk on, where the elk lived. Went to rain and snow, and, and we had a little old track we could follow out of there, and we had them little lights you buy for about two dollars then, and, and uh, you shine right down on that trail. So when you went to your stand early in the morning dark, you wouldn't light the whole world up with it, but you could. And we went into town miles and got back and had to park the vehicles way down there and walk back five or six miles. And we got away back in under black night and it rained and I heard somebody hollering, Help! Help! I said, Stop, boys, and listen to somebody into it. Help! Help! I got to hollering back at him. He could hear me. He's a way up through there, but your voice would carry good. And I, I said, uh, Where are you at? He said, I'm back over here. I said, I'm going to keep hollering. And you come to me. And he could. And I heard that fella uh, falling through things and a splash in water and, and coming to me. He finally got to me. Was he ever happy? I said, what's the matter with you? He said, we got a horse that hangs up in the barbed wire back over here seven miles. Walked in a bunch of barbed wire and I left my buddy over with him. Said, and here I'm out here lost in this wilderness. It's wilderness country, bear country. I mean, bear country. And you know what? I said, you see this little light right here? Take this little light and you follow them footprints that, that's ours. In that mud, they'll lead you right back over there at that campground, mile and a half, two miles over there. And, and he said, that's where I need to get to. And I said, you can get plenty of help over there. And that little old boy's going to stay at your horses. You're out of it. The Lord is my light. You know why some folks in trouble ain't got no light? Right. The Lord is my light. David, read that again. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Uh-huh. Whom shall I fear? What you getting scared of anybody? All right. The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? The Lord is the strength of my life. Now, I'm going to tell you all something that I've run on to across America in the church world. I've run on the spineless wonders. <laughs> no strength. He got so weak down home till the pastor and Sunday school superintendent just swapped wives. Never closed church or nothing. Never missed a service. They just swapped wives. That's weak. That's spineless wonders. Great God, born us out of backbone. No strength. The Bible talks about Zion. It didn't have strength enough to deliver. Right. 
You know, when you get weak, you ain't good to yourself or nobody else. I was here before I could hardly go. Couldn't hardly get up the steps. But I've run ever since I've been here. I'd run for you tonight where the Lord is moving on me, not just show you he's helped me to run. But I'd rather run if he's moving on me. But I'm going to talk. You know why I'm going to talk to you about your strength? Because of some of you as weak as a cat. I don't think I'll be back. Well, bless my heart. Have on show me a shoe. <laughs> it may say that you're not there, but I doubt it. Why are you going to stay out? The pastor didn't shake my hand. Had 300 to shake hands with. You shook hands everybody could see, and a few standing behind him. It missed you, and you ain't got strength enough to overcome that. I'm talking to you. No, don't admit it. We, me and you, neither one wants nobody to know it. I don't want to know it no more than you do. But bless my heart, we're going to pray for strength tonight. Oh, yes. Lord, in my strength, yes. give you power to talk back to the devil. All right, let's go a little further, David. Don't give out on me now. 28 chapter and the 6th verse. 28 chapter. Blessed be the Lord, because he hath heard the voice of my supplication. I thank God. Bless that wonderful name. Bless that wonderful name. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Bless that wonderful name. Bless that wonderful name. Bless that wonderful name of the Lord. Because he heard me when I cried. Yes. Heard me when I prayed. Heard me when I raised my hand toward his holy tabernacle. Called on his name. He heard me. Bless that name. Read it, David. The Lord is my strength. The what? The Lord is my strength. Look out when a man says that. If that's the truth and he's telling the truth, you can't handle it. Preach when any match to. I mean, if God's in it, you can't stop him. We didn't call on her to sing, but you sang anyhow. <laughs> Sister Dothy, uh, Sister Ruth Shepherd fell between the house and barn at Dothy, Oklahoma, having another hymn at just a lung, spitting up blood. She'd had a lot of it. When she fell, she said, Oh, my father. My earthly father's gone. He'd help me if he's here, but he's gone. He's dead. Would you help me? God healed her. God healed her. Years and years went by, and never nothing. She come to count meeting her dresses too long. Most of them too short, but this too long. Her sleeves had to fall over her hands. I thought she didn't know how to make clothes. Woo, but when she got up, they asked her to sing. I said, do you reckon she can sing? I didn't tell her that junk. I kept that myself, but I wondered if she could sing. You, you have wondered that. <laughs> could we get another witness for my Lord? Could we get another witness for my Lord? When she got through with that, I said, if you want to drink water, where is the water at? <laughs> David, I want you to read that one more time. Let's get the best out of it. The Lord is my strength and my shield. All right. He's my strength. He blessed sister and healed her like they did that black woman where I pastored and raised in the city of California, had a fellowship meeting. Here she comes, little old beanpole woman. Just, well, I mean just a skinny woman. You can't help your skinny. God help me. Well, how do you say that? A slim, fine-looking slim lady. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Have mercy on me. But you know, she got up and said, Woo! Done just like it done you. It just pierced my eardrum when Chris threw my head. He said, the Lord done heal me of the TB. Dying with the TB. He said, the Lord. I said, holler, woman. <laughs> Holler, woman. Lord is my strength. My heart trusteth in him. I'm trusting in somebody that don't fail, all right. Read it, David. And I am helped. I'm helped. Whew. Help come this morning. You got help this morning. I remember that time I run out of money. That's embarrassing, run out of money of preaching and tell folks God can do anything. You can't even tell them you ain't got no money because you done told them God can do anything. You can't get up and tell them you're hungry because you told them God would feed them. You up into it, preacher. I, I prayed and I laid down and, and I said, Lord, I've given everything in the world to it. And you know, I'm in an embarrassing situation here. I got no money. The Spirit of God came upon the first time that tongues and interpretation ever, ever spoke through me. I haven't had a great lot of experience with interpretation. But it spoke right through my mouth. I was living in a mansion, 11-foot house trailer, homemade. Quilts froze to the wall every morning in the winter. 
It's all right. God was in there and made a mention out of it. But you know what? Our Lord said, when I started to preach, he said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. I'll go with you wherever you go. You'll be obedient. Go where I send you. I'll be with you when you go. I'll make you everything. He has. Right where the rats and the snakes and the lost and everything was, he made it home, Father. He said, didn't I tell you I'd never forsake you? Holy Ghost come upon me, and interpretation come to me. And he said to me these words, Wherefore didst thou doubt? Did I not say unto thee, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee? Next morning, $35 waiting up there in the post office in the form of money, or just like 350 now. I was about 19 then. 19 to half. Lord, Lord done what for me? He helped him. Therefore, my heart trusteth in him. I am help. I'm what? I'm help. Don't worry, folks. I've got help. Help has arrived. Good. Don't you, aren't you glad when it gets there? Yes. Coming, up, coming up the driveway. It's in the mailbox. Yes. Thank God. Here comes help up the hill. Right. Read it, David. Therefore, my heart greatly rejoiceth. My heart, if you, if you can't get your, phys- your, your physical body, your chassis, if you can't get it to praise God, let your heart do a little of it anyhow. It'll get to your hands after I read, David. And my song will I praise him. In my what? And with my song. Song. God will give you a song to sing. You don't have to sing after nobody else. You can get one of your own. I've got several of them on like that. You can't tell it like I can what Jesus did for me. You can't tell it like I can how Jesus set me free. You can't tell it like I can no matter how you try. You can't tell it like I can. I'll tell it till I die. My song. Yes. What else, David? The Lord is their strength. Whose strength? Their strength. Watch it now. You don't want to get into it with them that's got God on their side, too. I used to work with a Baptist man, but he was saved. <laughs> Give it up now. If you don't think none of the Baptists are saved, I met one that was. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, old Alan was saved all over. He used to drink and cuss and smoke and do everything in the world, but he got delivered from every bit of it. One day on the job, he got the office cusser on that job, stopped. He said, you cussing here every day and using God's name in vain, you'll meet God's judgment for it, buddy, you better get saved. Give Jesus your heart, you're in <laughs> bad trouble. I walked by and I said, stop, L.D., on company time. And that old boy's chin was shaking, his eyes were full of tears. He said, this man needs God. I know it. I'd heard him cussing, too. I said, he's telling you right. Baptist deacon on one side, holy roller preacher on the other. Yeah. I said, man, give your heart to God. Boys, he said, you got to stop that. I'm going to go to crying on the job. I don't want to cry. All right, I said, we're backing off. But don't forget it. The Lord is their strength. Don't go to button heads with the neighboring church. If God's in it, leave them alone. Come on. Hey, God, have mercy. Only way you know how to build your church is to try to have dinner with the other pastor's people. Forget it. Come on. Only people you know to visit, the people that visit another church and invite them to yours when you know they got a church to go to. Forget that stuff. I don't even visit the Baptist members and try to get them to leave that to come to my church. But if they come and the power of God falls, I just let her fall, honey. I don't pay no attention to them. Lord, is their strength. Yes. Yeah. David, is that all? Is and that he is the saving strength of his anointing. Nobody can save but God Almighty. He's a saving specialist, a soul-saving specialist. It ain't special songs that save souls. A- amen. Yeah, and it's not great long prayers that save souls. It's Jesus Christ. He's the only one that knows how. Right. The world said he'd gone too far. Jesus saved him. Make a preacher out of him. The world said he'd been saved 15 times, been saved in that revival for 15 years. And he'll never make it. Get established after a while. Jesus put his strength in him and preach on till he dies. Come on. Read that again, David. That last three or four words there. He is the saving strength of his anointed. Those people that's anointed of God, you want to be careful with them. He's their saving strength. What else is that, David? Save thy people and bless thine inheritance. Feed them also and lift them up forever. Feed me, Jesus. You ever sing that? Feed me all the time. Fill my spirit with thy love divine. Let's talk it over. You ever sing that? That's a beautiful old song. Radio and the telephone have modernized this land. We don't know what we have in store, but soon we'll understand this good old preaching, praying, shouting, good enough for me. And I'll take old-time religion for eternity. Feed me, Jesus. You ever feed your children? 
Some of them's like my boy was since he's little. I had to make an airplane out of a spoon. <laughs> oh, he got into it. That's why his mouth flew. Oh, flew in. I fed him a mini a jar of baby food. He didn't really want, but he, he was kind of sick, you know. But he had to have the uh, he had to have the strength from him, so I did. Oh. <laughs> you know, sometimes we you ever have a church, you know, you kind of had to feed this one while he's talking to that. He does not while he's talking. <laughs> Come on, church. Feed them also. And you got to be fed. If you won't eat, you're going to die. Uh, I've been a pastor of nine churches, never great success at any of them, but I found out that sheep that won't eat is more worrisome than anybody. I love them hoggish kind of Christians. Let me get in there and help that song. I've had them sing bass when they're supposed to be a singing tenor, and I'll tell when they're supposed to be singing soprano. I've had women lead out on the bass in the chorus. I knew they didn't know uh, 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 a stop sign from nothing. I know they didn't know a quarter note and a half note, a whole note, didn't know time or nothing else, but they're kind of hoggish about getting in there. <laughs> Boy, to God, I love somebody. You ever have, I love to feed old hounds. At home, we was old coon, other possum, just like y'all. We used to sell hide for a living and eat the possums. <laughs> I know it. When old boy said he never would eat anymore either, I've seen eating that dead horse. He said, set this got sweet turtles with it. <laughs> you act like you know a little about that. <laughs> Go <Glory laughs> to God. Amen. <laughs> 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 But I love them old hound. Throw a biscuit out the back door. Jump, jump, jump her off the ground and catch it in the mouth and swallow it. I love that. I love it. Eat anything in the world. You got an old flop beard hound out there. I guarantee you'd eat anything in the world. Yeah. I, the Lord will feed him. Don't get too choicy about what he feeds. He feeds stuff that's got the vitamins in it. Yeah. He don't waste nothing. Amen. There's some folks feeding on things they call the gospel. It ain't nothing but a book or two they got from somewhere. For, from a son, fella away off somewhere wrote it. They don't even understand what they're reading, but because he's a double LDD double and been educated to the nth degree, they know that's got to be what it is. And they say, I read it in a book. What book? What did it say? Well, I don't know exactly what he meant, what he said. That's what they, they're feeding on. Yeah. I'm feeding on the wind. Brother, preacher friend of mine had a vision of the, I'm going to preach on strength, but you got to eat if you got any of it. Right. He's seen the saints at the altar with buckets. They was all kneeling praying, and when they went down the aisle, each bucket had a hole in it, and the stuff poured out before they got to the door. That's the reason folks can't get one meeting to another. Shout the walls down one meeting and run out before they get home. There's a leak somewhere. A bad leak somewhere. Oh, God. <laughs> Act like you ain't never heard. You may not be here where you're at, but I'm going to tell you one thing. We need strength worse than we ever needed in the history of the world. Amen. Amen. David, we've got to read more. We're going to have to hurry. It's going to get later. 40th chapter of Isaiah and, uh, and the 31st verse while, while I read Isaiah 41 and 10. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. God's talking. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. You don't make just what's in front of you, what's behind you, what's over you. If you've got God with you, you're in the majority. Amen. If you've got God, you're in the majority. All right. Fear not. I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. I will strengthen thee. Oh, bless your heart. I don't know what the friends I have that say I'm weak. I don't have any strength. Oh, God. I can't hardly make it. Oh, God. Well, I don't. I don't believe people that doesn't have physical strength. There's something wrong. You've got to have help from God to get it, and he can give that to you. I want you to know he can. Yes, sir. But spiritual strength is ebbing away in our world tonight. Oh, yes. Our word that we call liberty and freedom is being infringed upon pitifully in Oklahoma. Curse words I cannot repeat here, but your children can hear them on the radio. Not just that ungodly, silly television, but they can hear them on the radio. Bad, bad words. I'm objecting down there. I'm voicing my objection. KTOK, KOMA, other stations, they let those fellows bail shout whatever they want to, and our courts are getting so far from God until they say that's an infringing upon their rights of freedom of speech. Well, how about freedom of hearing? How about those rights of those little children uh, that, that tell their grandpa LD? Grandpa, it's yucky, six-year-old. TV's yucky. Them commercials is horrible from a 10-year-old grandpa. Them 
them television is horrible. I'll tell you something. Uh, what they're calling our freedoms, they are turning that against folks that do have freedoms of worship, freedom of religion. Uh, and and, and they're, they're turning that to ungodliness and saying they've got a right to do that because that's what our freedom grants. That's not what our forefathers meant by that. And you know I know it. But it's turning all type of evil deals and devices and things in upon us. We need strength. Yeah. Amen. You know what one radio station said? We didn't get no objection. The newspaper said, didn't get no objection. You got to let your objection be heard. Amen. I went to schoolhouse with a book. Had four letter words in it. It wasn't love either. Wasn't love and work either, huh? I went to the library and what's this book doing in this library? That lady's face turned red. I said, read them words right there. Mr. Moore, it's out of the library. I thank you so much. That's all it took to get it out of the library. I know it's not that easy to get out, but it takes a little backbone. You got to pray for God to help you. Amen? Pray for a little strength. All right, David, why did I give you the 40 and chapter and the 31st verse? But they that wait upon the Lord All right. shall renew their strength. Get your strength back. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. All right. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Woo! God gave you strength back to you. Huh? I didn't used to let that bother me. What happened to you? Huh? I used to just, I used to just get up and go for God. I wouldn't let nothing hard stop me. Well, what in the world happened to you? We well, was down in Oklahoma doing that. The Salvation Army is out on the street corner playing drums and, and tambourines. That's fine. It's a great work. I say to you, sir, you can contribute to them. That'll be nice, but you won't be saved because you did. That will not save you. See what I'm saying? Nice to give, but that won't say. Some people give the Red Cross say, well, I do something for God, I give the Red Cross. That's fine. I hope it got to where it's supposed to go. But when they pay an administrator $90,000 a year and run that thing, it don't look like it's a free gift operation to me. Huh? <laughs> they arrested five of us for preaching on the streets down there without a permit and, and let the Salvation Army take offerings and say anything they want to, but they, they arrested us. Well... They arrested, I beg your pardon, they arrested the five first and got me later, but they arrested these five for preaching on the streets without a permit. And, of course, I'm dumb and plain, and I don't know a whole lot, but, you know, when you just lay down, you ain't got no strength. Uh, you hug the backslid and you're going to quit because he did? Come on, tonight. Ask God to put some strength in you. Your wife won't come? You're going to quit because she quit? Don't do it. Get in there. Yeah, Ask God to give you some strength tonight. Yeah, sir, Get on your own feet. Walk your own walk. Amen. Amen. Hey, she ain't talking for you. She, she ain't talking for you. You ain't going to meet God for her. You ain't going to meet, meet God for you. You're going to let the children get up to about 16, 18 years of age, and they're going to they're gonna rule on you, and you ain't going to be a man and treat them like a child and be good. But look, you're supposed to have a, a backbone of a man or a woman. We can't go to church tonight. I've got sore throat. Gargle it with Listerine. If I don't have to lay down, we're going to church. You ain't done. I wasn't there Sunday night, my brother, because my wife had a sore throat. She had to do two or three loads of clothes before she went to bed, you know, and clean up the kitchen, but she's had such a sore throat. Your throat wasn't sore. Did you have to wash the dishes? Did you have to wash the clothes? No, I watched the TV, watched, but I couldn't go leave her. Why couldn't you go leave her? <laughs> My God, the backbone of a red worm. Hallelujah. They got the backbone of a red worm. <laughs> Ooh, I seem like I feel a spirit running backwards on me. I always feel like chasing them when I feel them running backwards on me. Come on. Don't you wish you thought I was joking? You know I'm not. Strength. We're going to have to have some strength here. Great God have mercy. <laughs> you hear my daddy coughing long ways before we got to the house, that bad cold. You hear my daddy coughing. Come in the house. Lethe, my mother's name. So I caught a bushel of coal up at five the next morning, right on to work. Never would quit that pneumonia. Now, I ain't saying we ought to do that, but I mean, that's the old time man. Boy, you reckon you'd get this? Yeah, I worked high. Well, I worked 36 and a half hours at one time myself because my daddy taught me that. Four come off the clock. 36 and a half, that's a pretty good father. That's, that's, that's a long day, 36 and a half. I was raised like that. Get out and get it, boy. Get out and get it. Now, I'm telling you, church, the Lord has got the strength. 
then we need spiritual strength. We, we can't put up no better fight than we do sometimes. We ain't got no spiritual strength. Okay. Hey, wait on the Lord. Be a little patient now. He'll be here directly. He'll make it on in a while. They that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. Mount up with wings of eagles. You ever hear anybody telling about eagles scared to death of storms? Not the eagle. No. He gets right. You know, the day I laid out on the yard at home, I was sick. That's before I got well. I seen some big old birds in the air migrating from up north down south. They come through Oklahoma. And them things, the wind from the south, blow, it blows in Oklahoma. Blow your hat in the creek. You think the wind blows here? It blows in Oklahoma. It blows in Oklahoma. Uh, and you know what? I watched them things, and they was riding right into the wind. Some way they could manipulate their wings and ride right into what's blowing against them. Yeah, I watched them do it. And that wind blowing so hard, you couldn't hardly stand up, and, and them old birds riding right into it. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. <laughs> they shall run. And not, how long you been running? Two days. Three days. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. We need some of them good walkers. Good walkers. We, we need some walkers. And we need some runners. But we're going to have to have folks that got strength in them. You bear the load for the church. If you set the example for your grandchildren, if you teach a class, if you're going to take on responsibility of working for God, you're going to have to have some strength because the devil don't like it. And he's going to come after you on it. Amen. All right, let's get out of there. 63 1, David. I wish I had time to run shout, but I got too much to say here, and I want to get a little said to you if I can. 63 1. Who is this that cometh from Edom? Who is this that comes from Edom? With dyed garments from Basra. Woo! Who is this that cometh from Edom with dyed garments of Basra? This is that. Uh huh. Is glorious in his apparel. All right. Traveling in the greatness of his strength. From mountain top to mountain top. From sea wave to sea wave. Great God. Traveling in the greatness of his strength. And he don't have to ask nobody. He ain't talk to nobody about giving him no strength. Talk to him. It's prophecy of Jesus. And dear old brother Ernest Martin, you all know him from Tennessee, writes them song. He's the one that wrote that, I'll steal a tempest on the sea and walk upon the wave. That who is this man? Traveling in the greatness of strength. You weak? He ain't. Huh? He rebuked him. He could take it. And he could make it. Oh, glory. Don't you want to pull the hill? I do. Oh, I'd love to have strength enough to make it. Wouldn't you like to have it? We're, we're going on with it. Let's go to David. Uh, let's go to 1 Corinthians 16 and 13. 1 Corinthians. We're talking about strength right now. Have you got any? We're talking about uh, uh, 1 Corinthians 16, 13. What chapter, Brother Moore? 16, 13. 1 Corinthians 16, chapter 13, verse. While I get for you 2 Corinthians 12 and 9. Let's get that 16, 13 first. Watch ye stand fast in the faith. Quit ye like men. Be strong. You know that word quit means to conduct or behave yourself like a man. Not like a weasel. My dad was going fishing with an old boy named Lore. He's dead. He's an Indian. He drove up the house to pick him up. They used to love trot lying in the rivers down no corner. Art! You ready, Art? I heard a woman's voice say, Art, Lore, you're not going fishing. You hear me? I said you couldn't go. <laughs> I've always heard, are you a man or a mouse? <laughs> and a mouse answered dad. They said, Roy, I don't reckon I'll go this time. I decided I wouldn't go. <laughs> I just a little boy, but I want to say, Miss Laura decided you wouldn't go. <laughs> you didn't decide that. She decided that. Quit, you like men. Behave yourselves like men. And be strong. Some folks practice this to be strong. I don't blame them. You can overdo that physically, but... It's all right to be stout. It's all right to be stout physically. The Texas paper comes out about once a month. It's a paper, Texas magazine. I don't take it now, but it's Texas Highways is the name of it. Thomas and Jefferson Stout Jackson, born northwest of Fort 
Worth in 1890 may have been one of the stoutest men in history. Stout was a small boy. Even as an adult, his size did not increase in measure with his strength. As a 155-pound senior in high school, he twisted horseshoes. He twisted horseshoes with his hands and hoisted 1,500 pounds with the back lift. Here's a picture of him with 13 men standing on a board, and that's two-inch stuff, and you see it's about three inches above him, saw horses, and you see him underneath it with his hands on that block, raising all them men. That's a natural untouched photo there. Weighed about 160 at that time. You ain't got no strength because you ain't got no size. Forget it. we got to have somebody that's got some strength, whether they got any gut on them or not. <laughs> we got to have somebody that's got some strength whether they got any back on them or not now this is altogether carnal and physical but here's a 160 pound man lifting 13 men on a board lift 13 of them that's just a natural photo of old stout jack on there lifting 13 of them. I'd help if I was able my God have mercy get out here and run the hills of chasing hounds and hunting deer hunting lay in the snow in the woods for days and ain't got strength enough to do nothing at the house of god take us an offering brother would you get somebody else are you allergic to offering pans <laughs> who in the world am i talking to god love you here's an old boss got a little strength i remember who you are and there'll be there'll be some black people know who you are too we could all say i can't give i won't go i can't do nothing but we can do something and we can do more than we think we can if we let's try roger you ain't got the weak I, I, I must have you. Lord God, no, have mercy. Try it anyhow. You know what I first, I know you will. I first come here, that mountain back over yonder, as boys from Oklahoma, they don't know nothing about mountains like that. Big old stout things from Oklahoma, and y'all stout too, I know it. One of them said, uh, this big old boy's about 16, 15, 14 long. How old are you? 14? One of them said, then I can beat you atop top that mountain. I thought, boys, now, that's, that's steeper than you think it is. They didn't know it. But they had strength. They run all the way to the top of that mountain. Hard as they go, just digging and jerking and grabbing trees. I want to tell them that's where I seen a fellow standing with his toe sack gathering corn because it's steep. He couldn't get nothing else into his corn patch. They didn't know it, but they're strong. He's stout. He's still twisting horseshoes with him. <laughs> you ever twist a... For many years, he toured Texas and Oklahoma performing at county fairs in March 1924 at Bob Holmes, Holmes Gin in Lubbock, Texas. He backlifted a platform loaded with 12 standard bales of cotton, a total of 6,472 pounds. You see, all this, this Texas magazine does is just speak of events that happened in Texas in past history, like the Alamo and their highways and the trees and birds. They don't go for lies. You can... You can Double check anything they put in here. They've done double checked it before they put it in. I know that the, the magazine lifted six thousand four hundred and seventy-two pounds. Try it. I can't lift that. Well, I don't think you can lift six thousand four hundred seventy-two pounds. But would you try the other end of that board there and just see if you could? You may be able to do more than you think you can. Spiritually is my main thought tonight. But the Bible teaches us that spiritually, be strong. Quit yourselves like men. Amen? Would a man say that like you said it? Would a man think that like you thought it? A fellow called me the other day and said, Preacher Moore? Yes. He's on our board over at Bristol. I happen to be the chairman. For 15 years, I took that persecution. <laughs> oh, you think there ain't no money in it? I'll tell you that. All it is is criticism. Amen? But are we going to let the church go down? Or are we going to get in there and stand up and do our best? What are you going to do with it? Huh? What, what? The fellow called me and said, Brother Moore, I, I hate to ask you. Why don't you ask me? Well, he said, I, I'm ashamed to ask you. Why are you ashamed for a talk? He said, I heard that you believe so and so. Strangest belief that he heard I believed. I didn't know I believed that. Looked like I'd have known it if I did. Well, son, I said, I don't believe no such stuff. He said, the fellow said, that's what you told him. When I was a younger preacher, I'd have fought from the hip and said, Tell that liar to shut his mouth before God shuts it for him. <laughs> but the Lord would let me say that. You know what? I believe God gave me strength. I do. you got to have strength to overcome. You hear me? Overcomers have strength. You need strength tonight. I'm talking about strength. You know what? 
I said, be careful how you answer the man that told you that. They may have misheard, heard wrong, or just imagined something. Deal with them careful. But gently tell that brother boy, don't believe that, will you? For fear we might knock what little strength there was in somebody completely out of them and me get too brutal with that. Wouldn't you like to be able to back lift 6,472 uh, pounds? There wasn't nobody say you're the weasel no more, could they? Right. Lazy preacher won't even do nothing. They couldn't say that no more, could they? If I could be in a horseshoe, I'd just be in one right in front of you. Hallelujah. <laughs> I had an old deacon lifted 465 pounds. I thought that was a great lift. But old stout Jack weighed 160 here. could beat anything I ever heard of. It killed him, didn't it? No. He lived to be 86 years old and died down yonder in Texas at Austin. Talking about strength. Quit yourselves like men and be strong. I flew up on an airplane with two soldiers. One was it come to Lawton, Oklahoma, and they trained him out there. And the other, they both live right in here somewhere in this country. A young man, cream of our crop, is about 20, 21 years old, both of them. One sitting behind me is talking to one front, and he had on that army uh, uh, a tar, and he, and, and, and he took his coat off in the one front this week and got it. And they know I, the, everything's special in there. They train you for everything. You've always been in them, but you could turn that cuff back and button it and then turn it up just so many laps at a time and it just strikes right here where it's supposed to strike. And that in that front done that for him. The one in the back didn't thank him. You know what the Marines train men to do and if you've got a Marine here, you know I'm telling you the truth. They don't train you to protect your nation necessarily or die for your country. They train you to die for your buddy next to you. And he overhauled that fellow that's getting off there and got off and you boys seen him standing there waiting with his dad with that little red, that special branch you, you know, see, you, and he had that. And when he put that on in front of uh, and me in and, and that plane, or sitting across from him, that boy in front looked back to, uh-uh, no, no. said, you haven't got it down close your eye enough. Said, and he reached back there and fixed that all for him. And this boy looked down, his boots looked all right to me, but they wasn't tied right. He untied them, got them tied back, run the rest of it down top of that boot, had them britches down top of that boot. And when, when he come off of there, he, I heard him tell him, said, they made us march to a foot of water. I don't know how far they had to go marching to a foot of water. But when that, when that Virginia boy got off there, he was covering a yard or two at a time. Just ease his grease machinery. Why, Lord, I said, he walks like a bear, a bear, just like a machine, run uphill just fast he can downhill, you know it? His shoulder muscles so built he can just knock a hound's head right off his shoulder if he's a big right. bear, drag it right off. Right. You bear hunter. I tried to keep up with him. My old legs are getting better. It's gotten better ever since I've been here. It won't be long. I'll be back in perfect condition. I tried to keep up with him. I said, son, ain't the first time you walked in. He no, I said, been walking quite a bit. <laughs> you know, the reason some folks ain't got strength enough to stand up, they ain't been doing enough walking. Too much talking. <laughs> we don't need too much strength in our tongues. That ain't where we need it. Quit yourselves like men. Behave yourselves and get up there and get with it. Second Corinthians 12 and 9 said, uh, and he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for thee. My strength is made perfect in weakness. As long as the weak can't hardly go, he can strengthen you right there. You need strength on something, don't you? I know you did. And, and my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather go in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. I'm talking to you tonight. I prayed on this morning uh, down in, in, in Mike's church about talking to you uh, about strength. Uh, uh, in Second Timothy 2, 1, the Bible said, Thou therefore, my son, be strong. In the grace, as in Christ Jesus, I'm telling you too. Our church world needs strength to overcome. Amen. To not go, you know, a lot, it's no trial to some folks uh, uh, to to not go to some places because they're strong. Amen. 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 They don't have to sneak around and, and read that old. Uh, bad literature. They don't have to sneak around and look at old bad pictures. Come on. See, they prayed and God gave them strength. They said, no, Satan, I will not yield. Huh? I will not yield to that. I'll never meet her again. I'll never meet him again. God has helped me. I got strength in the altar. I'm not going back by there no more. Right. Oh, I know what we are. We're human. We've got to have strength. God wants right. us to have strength. Now, you can't have strength if you don't eat. What used to worry me so bad and still bothers me with our church world 
a sheep that won't eat. Pray for me and mine, and you hit the door. Don't forget my children, and you leave. I'll pray for your children, but if you ain't going to come down here and pray yourself, you need strength. Amen? I helped herd 5,000 head of sheep when I first got saved, and I wasn't a sheep herder. I wasn't raised to herd sheep. And in Oklahoma, it's not a sheep state. They sent me to Mr. Roy Jones on a big grocery store and had a big farm and had a bunch of sheep. And me, a sinner, wanted me to take care of them sheep. I'm not about sheep. Five of them dead one morning. Blow didn't die. you know what killed them? What to eat? I believe that killed sheep. According to what you're feeding on, whether you bloat and die or not, eat the wrong thing that killed them. Here come one of them. Uh-oh, I said broke leg. Have to shoot it. Broke leg, about to shoot it. Hey, for me, thanks, Tim. I'll make it. Grass burr. Grass burr. Grass burr. Tar sun is too fast up over grass burr. You need strength. Let us all come to altar. I've asked him to do that. And go home. What worries a sheep hurt as much as any? Is a sheep like uh, I, we had down in Oklahoma laid his head down under a bush. Every time it raised his head up, it'd take us here and lay his head back down. It laid there till it was almost dead before the, uh, uh, before the shepherd found it, dug it out from under there. No resistance. All it was was a bush. Got out from under that, but it just didn't have strength enough to do it. Oh my. I do know that some uh, messages is too full of Greek, and that's the reason folks can't understand them. They can't eat them because they don't know what they said. It was that set up or set down or shut up or get up or what? They don't know what they said. I reminded a preacher said he had feed that got rained on. He had a bunch of sheep and it just big balls and got hard and he sold it out in the troughs and said he looked back later and the sheep couldn't eat it. They just rolled it from one end to the other. It had to be broke up for them because it was so wadded together they couldn't chew it. I believe I put out a message or two like that and all the sheep done rolled it from one end of the troughs to the other and never got a bit of good out of it. Well... <laughs> Then he said he had some troughs that is too high. It is too filled with Greek and Latin. And the sheep stood there trying to get it, but never could get it. <laughs> trough was too. He said he sawed the legs off his sermons. I mean troughs. <laughs> he got it down so they could eat it. Well, how's your strength holding out? Well, no boy down home, I know you've heard better than this. I know that. I know that. Uh, well, I know, boy, did, could you ever pinch with your big toe and the toe next to it? I never could do that. I never could pinch nothing like that. But well, I know, boy, that raised up on the farm, maybe like you was, every time they have a Christmas or get together and family sat around the far before they went to bed, he'd let them all be talking and sitting there and he'd ease that foot around. He could pinch, no! They'd come out there and jump up and kick and shake. He'd just pinch the far out of them with that big toe and the one next to it. He got old. One year they went to see old uncle, he is old, sitting around there before they went to bed and, and warming up one, winter time. One of them said, Uncle, can you still pinch with your big toe? And he never said nothing. He just waited his chance and he locked that big toe and that other up on one of them old boys. He sent him up a tree early. Wouldn't you like to have strength so you could accomplish something for the Lord? Can you still sing like you used to? Well, we ain't going to brag whether we can or not. But pray for God to anoint you one more time, will you? I've seen old timers, so old they couldn't hardly stand up, carry me to church, brother more. Yeah. I've seen them tear the meetings all to pieces because they still had plenty of spiritual strength. Yeah. I pastored one. She took a bad stroke and went to the hospital, and a worldly woman went up there to see her and said, Miss Sonja, how are you? She came out and said, You can't talk to her. She's crazy. She ain't got no sense. She's goofy. I didn't believe it. I walked into her. Mother, I said, how in the world are you? Pretty good, Brother Moore. Can't talk too plain about a bad stroke. But said, I'm on the way home. I'll be gone just a little bit. Said, it won't be long. I'll leave. And said, would you try to help that alcoholic boy of mine get saved? That's about the last thing she said. You know, he started reading the Bible just after Mother died. It wasn't a day or two. He started reading that Bible. He had set it home and read it. He quit that drink and he gave God his heart. Well... I believe I'll pray on, pray on, see what the end will be. I've had to, such a good time at times, until I think I'll just ask God to load me up with enough strength and vitality to climb the high mountain 
and make it in home. It takes strength to overcome the lust of the flesh. It takes strength to overcome the pride of life, the lust of the eye. It takes strength to walk on by. Walk on by. Walk on by. I want you to stand tonight, and I want everybody that feels like they don't have, now don't come right now if you're in that other group, and that'll be fine if you are. I'm not trying to put you, embarrass you, but I'm just out to help people, that's all. And I preach primarily to the church tonight, I know that. But look, if you know, and now if you don't, you stand still there. But if you know, and now I'm not trying to embarrass you, don't think that. I'm not using this for chance to criticize you, you hear me? But if you know you ain't got strength like you ought to have spiritually. I'm going to ask you to tell, don't tell everybody what's wrong with you. Just get a bunch of folks talking about you. No, no, that ain't nothing to do at all. They just talk about you. And, 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 but if they talk about you for coming down here to seek strength from God, let them say it. But you know tonight that you haven't had enough strength to behave yourself like you ought to or to overcome that thing that's bothering you bad. You just can't hardly. Uh, maybe you're like that old boy that had temper. He had a bad time with his temper, and, and, but he couldn't hardly overcome it till uh, his child come by. It wasn't mine. He just knocked it to the floor and told the preacher, Vish him, I can't control my temper. It's just bad. I just... The fellow rode up out at the gate, and he went out, and the fellow cussed him for everything he could think of and rode off. And the preacher said, I see you have pretty good control of your temper when you want to. He never talked back to that. But look, you may have a temper, and you may need help with that. And that's a terrible thing. It takes strength from God to overcome this flesh. This flesh will make a decision against everything God wants you to do. If you let it, it will make a decision against everything God wants you to do. Amen? You can sing. I wouldn't go to the choir. Well, you may be a pretty good singer. You need strength to get up and say, I'm going to do. You know, I thought I was pretty stout one time till I preached in a town in Ohio. A nice bunch of people like you all. I didn't do any better than I've done tonight, which is not so hard. And after church, a woman said, Brother Moore, you must have been sick. I just know you could beat that. <laughs> no, ma'am, I said I wasn't, but it seemed like I kind of feel... A little bit of sickness now since you said that. You like it. You know. Do you need a little more strength tonight? Come on down. Maybe they'll sing us a verse. And I want you that feel you need more strength from God to lead the way, will you? It's going to be kind of hard on you, but I want you to do it. All right. I'm waiting on you. Don't wait. We just, well, in this time of altar and you don't have to hear me no more. Be flat. Everyone that feels, Brother Moore, I've got to have more strength. I'm in a problem. I'm in trials. I'm in test. I don't have enough strength to overcome like I need to. I'm coming. God bless you.